Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar from Ineos Revolution. Today we are talking about eco specialty polymers. Uh, I'm very happy that you all are here. Thank you for your interest. And um, my name is Christian Ruthard. I'm the product manager for our eco specialty products that we talk about today. And uh, I'm not alone today, so my colleague Pierre uh, Juan is also here. So, Pierre, could you please introduce yourself? It's great pleasure, Christian. So, uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks to be there. Yeah, my name is Pierre Juan. I'm the head of uh, technical product management for Europe, and uh, I will uh, support a bit uh, and introduce this presentation. Exciting topic, uh, of course, recycling sustainability. Um, so, uh, just a couple of technical points. This webinar will be registered. It will be made available on our website following the presentation. So you can look at it um, afterward or uh, recommend it to uh, your colleagues if they want to have a look at it. And we will let you know at the last slide where to find it. Second point, um, you certainly are welcome to ask questions. These questions will be registered and they will be answered after the presentation from Christian. Um, use this little chat box with a question mark on the upper right corner. Um, the question will be addressed anonymously. Your name and uh, company will not be um, uh, re you know, referred to during the presentation, so um, no uh, issue there. This uh, presentation will last 45 minutes until um, a quarter to five. Right, having said that, um, again, let's get started maybe with the first slide. Uh, yeah, Ineos Star Solution, uh, maybe a short introduction of who we are for those who don't know us. Uh, Ineos Star Solution is a part of Ineos Group. Um, we are specialized in staminic based material. You see here a couple of uh, key data 3,500 employees um, in countries around the world, different uh, sites, R&D center, sales office, a lot of intellect property inherited over uh, many years of experience. Um, the company was created as a, initially a joint venture between PISF and Ineos IBS. But since then we belong 100% to the Ineos group. Um, we are organized by industry. You see that on the top uh, left side. Um, so uh, sales and uh, marketing, I think, uh, industry, automotive, electronic, household, and so on. A lot of application running. And we have some reference in the world of sustainability. We've been working, obviously, as many of our peers in the, this field for many years, and Ecovadis is uh, recognizing our efforts. And uh, we've been rating on a regular basis the last years from bronze to gold, and we are reaching now the platinum level in 2021 recognizing our efforts. So we belong this way to the top 1% of plastic manufacturing suppliers that are rated as platinum uh, globally, and the top 1% of uh, all suppliers assessed in all categories. So uh, let's prove it that we are on top of the agenda of sustainability. we we'll move on to the next slide, please. Yeah, uh, as I said, Ineos Solution is part of Ineos. Um, uh, uh, big, uh, uh, came me a concern obviously around the world and we have published our targets uh, on the group level uh, zero net emission zero liter 100 percent recyclability and our pledge are as uh, Ineos group that we commit to achieve a net zero emission by 2050 um, that we are going to use 30 percent recycled material content in our products specifically on polystyrene for packaging in Europe and um, that 100% uh, of our polymers that we put on the market are can be recycled or recycled. So I get uh, uh, back to you, Christian, for uh, explaining us how we can uh, achieve these uh, wonderful targets. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Pierre, for, for, for this good introduction. Yeah, so I will go more into details. Um, how do we want to achieve these targets? So getting more into concrete um, plans and our roadmap. <clears throat> Sorry. So for, for the targets, we have identified two main pillars that, that we are going to address. One is littering and waste. Obviously, if we talk about polymers in 
in, in a wide of variety of applications, the term, the term of plastic waste in terms of littering is very, very, very key if you talk about sustainability. Another topic is greenhouse gas emissions, uh, which is clearly if you talk about climate change on, on the agenda from, from all of us, from society. So if we talk about littering and waste, we basically have different methods to address this. Um, our main goal here, our main target is to address this by recycling. So we are heading into a lot of different activities. I will also go into more detail about that. So and, and the basic differentiation we, we use in our definitions here is mechanical recycling uh, and so-called advanced recycling. Advanced recycling is also often called chemical recycling. For greenhouse gas emissions, yeah, um, the recycling is already an option. So when you not litter uh, waste, when you when you don't litter plastics, if you don't produce waste, uh, if you don't landfill those, or if you even don't incinerate those, you can also save a lot of carbon footprint. Um, of, of emissions also by not being, uh, you, it's not necessary to, to use new polymers if you use waste as feedstock. So that's clearly one way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in combination with addressing littering and waste. But there's another way that we are going to address. Um, and this is if you use renewable feedstock. So that's not the classical fossil oil-based feedstocks. It would be based on some, some sort of bio feedstock and this is clearly an option to even greater reduce greenhouse gas emissions than with the other option I just mentioned. And all of those I will explain today. So in terms of littering and waste, I, I have this nice uh, uh, overview here. It seems to be a bit complicated, but I will talk you through. So <clears throat> in a classical way, we have fossil feedstock, like the old style uh, from fossil feedstock we and others produce monomers, and monomers are produced used for producing polymers. So that's the, the old star way. We produce products out of these. We use these products, and at this turning point here, um, uh, there's different option to use this waste, uh, and we should use it. I mean, uh, just throwing it away is really not a good idea. Plastic waste is quite valuable. You can use it to produce new polymers. One way to produce new polymers is to have uh, waste that is so clean, uh, often from different from specific applications like electronics uh, applications, so clean waste that you can shred it, you can clean it, and you can reuse it. Uh, you, you modify it to a bit to 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 enhance the properties again, and then you end up uh, with products. Uh, that can be used again. This is called mechanical recycling. Another uh, way that we call advanced recycling uh, is uh, to use uh, waste that is usually of a slightly less quality in that sense, that it's not uh, not 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 good enough for 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 this mechanical route uh, um, for certain reasons. Uh, and if you, but we should still use this waste. And one way to use this waste is with so-called advanced recycling. So these are usually chemical uh, ways where you change the uh, polymers back to to feedstock. Either it's it's some sort of uh, nafta again, some sort of oil, or or some monomers that can be used back to polymers. <clears throat> and we can do this uh, by so-called recycled attributed feedstock. And uh, I will explain to you what we mean with attribution. But first of all, I would like to continue discussing the different methods we have for recycling. So you see below here again the old style way to produce polymers, your feedstock monomers polymers. They go to waste at a certain point of time. And we should stop landfill and incineration like I mentioned before. We should use this waste, recycle it. As you see a very big uh, a stream here that can be used in different ways. One way, as I just mentioned, is to use mechanical recycling. And the benefit of mechanical recycling is that you actually arrive from the waste directly back to polymers. That has a certain advantage. It's actually quite uh, 
uh, efficient, so you need less energy to, to do mechanical recycling if you compare it to other recycling technologies. You can implement it quite quickly. It's available in the market. Uh, there are some waste streams, but we have to improve. And it actually has a quite good carbon footprint because of less energy used in comparison to other options I will explain to you thereafter. Um, and, and we think that you should apply mechanical recycling for, for that waste streams where you can do it. So it's clearly uh, an advantage to use mechanical recycling if you can go for mechanical recycling. But I explained to you there are other feeds that, that are not suitable for that. Another method that uh, we are also investigating is dissolution. Uh, here you use some solvents and this can be used for slightly less quality waste which might have some impurities and, and to get them out. Uh, we are working on this, but it's not ready yet. Mechanical recycling is ready. I will come to this. And the dissolution, you also result at polymers. Therefore, it's in the same category here. One other option, and you might have heard that we are quite active on this. As a Styrenix producer, uh, we have uh, yeah, invented or have really looked into deeply a process how to depolymerize polystyrene back to styrene monomer. Uh, we have proven this on lab scale and we are going to build a pilot plant together with recycling technologies. It's just announced and it will be running uh, somewhere mid of next year is our expectation. Uh, and this pilot plant will be then uh, used to prove that technology and because this technology is quite new, it's not in place right now for styrenics. But what what we can do there is we have uh, pure polystyrene waste, like yogurt cups. They can be depolymerized. You arrive back at monomers. And uh, from this monomers, you can produce polymers again and waste. And the benefit here is really uh, uh, you can have a drop in property. So the monomers are of same quality than before. And, and then also the polymers are of same quality. So in some cases, it's easier to, for example, achieve food contact for such such a process. Another process is called pyrolysis or gasification of mixed waste. Um, here many many parties are active uh, and actually this is a bit more advanced so you can get um, pyrolysis based feedstock already and what is done here so you sort of uh, depolymerize is, is is, is not the right word so you you put the polymers back to some sort of oil and this oil is a bit like, like the oil we use from a fossil nature uh, or like the naphtha we use in our plants. And, and from this oil, you can also produce, uh, we call it feedstock here, new monomers, new polymers and waste of same quality, uh, not waste, <laughs> polymers of same quality uh, than our virgin fossil based alternatives. Uh, the advantage here is clearly even more waste can be used. You are not limited to a certain polymer uh, um, like like for depolymerization, we we do it with polystyrene because we want to produce styrene monomer. But for gasification purposes, you can have a mixed variety of plastic waste. So that's a good way to use the additional part of of the waste stream. And this is actually uh, um, uh, more developed in terms of industrial scale and depolymerization. We are in the ramp up phase. Another option, actually, it's not directly recycling, but to address sustainability, as I mentioned before, is if you would use renewable feedstock. And so this is the picture for renewable feedstock. Uh, and, and you have seen this picture before. And, and the difference we are doing right now here is to add bioattributed feedstock into this system. And, and now I explain to you what we mean with attribution. Another word for attribution might be mass balance, and you might have heard this before. Um, so, so let's let's explain a bit. If you have this setup, and I, I have explained this before, the old style setup, you have fossil fuel, you run it through a refinery, uh, steam crackers, and so, uh, uh, and then you produce naphtha, and then you put this into a steam cracker, for example, you produce basic organic chemicals further production, uh, polymerization, and you produce polymers out of this. What you can do is you can, instead of using naphtha, you can something use something like called bio-naphtha. So that is a bio-based source, which is on similar quality or even same quality 
than the NAFTA. It can be used by the steam cracker and it can be produced just as the same as NAFTA for producing basic organic chemicals. Um, what we have, the situation, what we have is we, we, we cannot use 100 percent of biosources in one cracker because the availability is still not there. It's a transition period for chemical industry. Chemical industry might transition from, from purely oil-based to, to circular and biosources. And for this transition period, we need something called mass balance so, or attribution. So what we do is we put, for example, 100 ton of bio nafta into a, a steam cracker. And, and then we produce a lot of chemicals out of these. And all of these chemicals are of same quality than, than, than the products that we usually produce uh, based on fossil uh, uh, feedstock. And but but 100 ton is not enough for it's not a lot for a steam cracker. It's only a small part. So uh, actually, to get started, we attribute this 100 tons to a specific product. So we can say, in this product, let's say uh, this this uh, um, water filter here, uh, we have uh, attributed 70% of a biofeedstock to this, uh, and we can say by a certified process. Uh, you might know the company ISCC Plus. This is a, a, certificate, a certificate we have. Um, and uh, by this, we can then state, okay, yeah, we have uh, really put uh, that much product, for example, from Biosource into our system that we sell. So it's not more or less. We directly, what we put in, we have to sell, but we can attribute where this feedstock is going to. And, and this is called attribution. Um, we have different sources. Uh, we have, as I told you, biosources. And here I would like to stress a bit uh, the, the, root, the, the, the sources we, have, we are using here. Um, these are all so-called sec second generation biosources, or let's call it, uh, it's bio-waste. So it's, it's waste that uh, occurs by processes that are already there, like um, production of paper, that's called crude tall oil, that's a side product in paper production some other forestry residue that is happening in all kind of uh, forestry activities, kitchen waste that, that is clearly waste, and straw, which is a byproduct of, of, of food production. So actually all these do not compete with food, uh, and that's important to us. So it's all second generation biosources. We think these are most sustainable. They are also called biocircular sources because uh, they are also in a, in a way in a circle because it's waste that is used here. Um, this is a good option, as I said, to produce uh, uh, to to reduce the carbon footprint very significantly. Another option I discussed today is is this part of this picture here, uh, where we use um, circular sources, so plastic waste, for example, mixed plastic waste or or end of life tires. And they can be run through a pyrolysis uh, plant, or, or yeah. And and by this pyrolysis oil is a bit also similar than nafta, and can be used in the steam cracker again, like the bio nafta, to produce the same quality of basic raw materials. And we can also use our certification here to attribute a cert the the for example 100 ton of pyrolysis oil we put in the system to a certain product. The good thing about attribution is, first of all, as I said, the, it's necessary to get the industry transformed. That's clear. You cannot run a steam cracker at the moment on biofeed only. The volumes are just too small. Uh, and it's a good way to, to really, uh, because we put these, these uh, raw materials at the beginning of the process, and because of the chemicals, all of produced here are the same quality. Actually, the product at the end is of identical performance. So it's really Actually, no need to test it from a, from a mechanical point of view because it's the same. It's a drop-in, so it's a very easy solution for um, for um, for applications. <clears throat> Just give you an example about carbon footprint reduction. So, so if we apply uh, a 60% uh, content of of bioattributed feedstock into our products. Uh, we can, for example, in this case, it's just one example, we use the carbon footprint by 70, 40%. And I think that's that's quite significant. And, and that shows how how well this works with using bioretribution to reduce carbon footprint. 
wanted to go a bit more in detail about mechanical recycling. So I talk now about basically this is uh, attribution topics, uh, mass balance topics where we have bio-based and chemical recycling. But for mechanical recycling, there's no need for a mass balance uh, because here the, the process is much simpler. There are no steam crackers involved that, that are so big that you can run it to 100% as I explained. In mechanical recycling, you basically just talk about compounding um, and, and the, the steps to produce that, uh, to, 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 to clean up this waste. And so what we can do here is really produce uh, crates containing um, uh, mechanically recycled uh, um, waste. Uh, important to say here is, and, and, and this is maybe a bit misleading uh, in some discussions, uh, we only talk about uh, post-consumer waste. Uh, for, for all our waste, we, we don't talk about post-industrial waste. That's the same for the chemical recycling, but also for the mechanical recycling. So here we uh, look at PCR, uh, post-consumer uh, waste, um, 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 because we think that's the most sustainable option and we strive for sustainability. And it's the only option that really addresses littering and waste. Uh, I think post-industrial recycled uh, is, is used either way, so it's not, not, not thrown away, so it's not a waste topic. So therefore, clearly, we, we talk about PCR here. And um, let me go at this into a bit more detail. So we have actually a product line called Novodua, that's an ABS product. Um, and uh, Novodua Eco is, is, uh, is, 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 is the product line where we use mechanical recycling. So actually we use PCR ABS flakes uh, from, from uh, electronics waste, as I mentioned. And so we can offer this uh, in different crates. Uh, and actually, I think that's a bit unique to us. We can offer those in colors. So uh, you can have like, like this nice coffee machine in red uh, or other colors. So, so Novodua Eco is available in colors and not only in black. So mechanical recycling is not limited to black. There's good ways to, to have colors. And you see here different levels. Uh, and I think a good solution is really something above 50, 70 percent. That's the level of mechanical recycled content in these products. And, um, and these crates have actually quite a virgin-like performance. So we managed to, to have a product that is very close. Um, you might have some, some deviations that's clear because of the relatively high content of PCR, but we are very well in managing this because of our knowledge of our technologies. And so we combine 70%, for example, of PCR waste, we combine with 30% of our, of our um, intermediates and so to say, lift up the properties again back to a virgin-like performance. Um, what we also offer here is self-coloring. So we offer the P2HAT with 70% uh, uh, mechanical recycling content in a version called 4MB, for 4 master batch is this, this acronym. And, and this enables an easy access to many colors. So, um, so, so actually it's, it works. So what we have, we have a constant base color of, 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 of such a light colored uh, um, material um, that, that we can offer and, and customers can actually add master batch to, to achieve a certain level of, of colors. Um, what we're also working on, but it's not commercial yet, but available as development grades, our Novodu High Heat. So this is basically for, mainly for automotive applications where you need higher heat. Uh, this is quite unique uh, to develop actually because the waste is not high heat. So we, we have electronics waste. So, but we have the technology to transfer this lower heat PCR flakes uh, um, to, to high heat uh, um, levels. And, and these are the crates we are working on. You might have heard about them in the virgin version. So, so we are able to, to offer them in this mechanically recycled version for, for, for testing and for projects. And I think here we also progressing well. So <clears throat> here I would like to uh, um, elaborate a bit on the process we, we do for mechanical recycling. And you know, if you do recycling, it's all about the waste management first. So we need quite clean waste that, that has good properties. And this can be found in the electronics area, so-called the VPCR waste. You see a picture of an example of such a waste. Uh, um, and, and, and what we do here is we actually need to have several circles of 
and I will not go into all details uh, of sorting, of grinding, of washing, and, uh, and, and sorting is very important. So what we make sure is that the, uh, uh, the ABS fraction that comes out of all these activities is very pure. There's no, uh, no significant um, um, uh, impurities from other polymers that could hinder the properties. That's very important. And also uh, um, the process removes metals. Uh, it removes also flame retardants, which are used in some ABS applications. So, so we, we make sure that the promine uh, is taken out here. Uh, and then we add this uh, uh, sorted and cleaned uh, um, ABS flakes. We add our modifiers to this. We compound this, and then we end up at a at a Novodur eco. So what is our roadmap for the for the next years? I talked a lot today about different options and so on. Uh, so so we have different product lines. You might know this. Uh, uh, we we sell polystyrene. We sell ABS, and we also have all types of transparent and non-transparent specialties. Um, so I, I mainly talked about specialties today, but quickly touching the the polystyrene and ABS. So there we are quite active, also in mechanical recycling, also in in for 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 styrolution PS we can uh, achieve high priority mechanical recycled crates. Um, that that's very 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 nice topic, um, and also here we are looking into uh, for for polystyrene ABS into into mass balance and also into depolymerization uh, um, that's, that's also linked to that. Um, for, for specialties mentioned today, uh, we have our mechanical recycled Novodur Eco, it's available. Uh, we have um, other crates that are transparent, SIN and NIS, for example, NIS is SMMA, so SIN and SMMA are available now uh, with bioattributed feedstock with significantly reduced carbon footprint, maybe 70, maybe 80%, depending on the crate. And uh, we are going to implement rather soon uh, also this recycled attribute field set based on chemical recycling. Um, so this is this is uh, going on in the development here. Um, and also we are working on expanding this concept of mass balance to, to yeah, at the end, potentially uh, a bigger part of our portfolio. So I didn't talk about Luan S today, for example, you might know this great ASA, uh, but, but we also have in scope to, to look into this and, and to do projects with mass balance of such crates. And at the end, also we are going uh, into this depolymerization uh, where, we, where we are going to use styrene monomer from, from polystyrene waste uh, on top of this oil. Yeah, and uh, I hope I hope that was 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 clear to you. Or, uh, but but always with these kind of things, questions arise. So uh, I know there are maybe more questions than answers in this topic. So uh, very happy to receive your questions. And yeah, Pia, what, what what do you have? Do you? I hope we got some questions. We have a few, but I'm not sure uh, that everybody realized uh, that you can ask your question. They will be treated anonymously uh, by the little chat box. Uh, but uh, let me start with one interesting question. Um, someone is asking, the plastic waste post-consumer recycle, PCR, can feed both mechanical and chemical recycling. Do you expect competition among these two technologies to secure plastic waste as a feedstock? I mean, securing plastic waste feedstock is an is an important topic. I mean, a lot of parties are going into this. This is uh, very important. Um, in terms of competition, we would really strive for using PCR for mechanical recycling as soon as the quality allows. So, so we shouldn't we shouldn't talk about uh, using high quality PCR waste that could be mechanical recycling and put this into chemical recycling because that would be not beneficial for the carbon footprint. Right. So I've got another question here. Are uh, Novodur P2HAT grades suitable for food contact application? No. Uh, so for mechanical recycling, we and in Novodur, we will not go into food contact. Um, that's just too complicated in terms of managing uh, everything. Uh, so, so here we would rather go for mass balance. So that's the simpler option. So for for 
And, and also for mechanical recycling in our portfolio, we mainly go for uh, targets where it's possible, uh, achievable by the PCR um, um, quality. But if you have very specific applications like food contact or maybe medical, it's better to use the mass balance system. Uh, I think we can add, uh, Christian, that in yeah. the field of polystyrene, uh, yeah. we are planning to make mechanical recycling polystyrene, uh, which is uh, pure enough to be used as food contact application too. Um, uh, as yeah. an exception to the, the main difference the, here is that the PCR content, is, uh, PCR source is PS. Yeah. Uh, and here we have identified that it's actually possible to go back to food contact quality, but for ABS we doubt this. Right. So uh, we've got a question about CO2 emission. Um, mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, the target for inhaled dilution. Um, are you going to communicate the CO2 emission level of your specific rates? Oh, yeah. yeah, so um, we are in the process of, of calculating uh, our carbon footprints of all our crates. Uh, we have already calculated for, for some or a lot of them. Uh, so yes, we are going to communicate on this uh, with, with customers. So so for projects and so on. So you could use these as argument. You can calculate your final products uh, and, and you would get the number from us for more and, and we let it certify from an external supplier. So we have a question on a certification. You just mentioned mm -hmm. it, uh, though you uh, introduced bio attributed mass balance materials for Luran and NIS. Um, how uh, are these content certified? Yeah, for the <clears throat> for the mass balance uh, applications uh, and products, we use ISCC plus. And this is certifying the content. So you will get if you if you if you would procure such material by us, you would get a sustainability declaration that will directly tell you certified by ISCC plus the content of 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 uh, recycled or biodeputed feedstock. In terms of mechanical recycling, we are working on this. Yeah, I think we cannot answer all technical questions. This is obviously mm -hmm. a very, very dynamic environment, but we are trying to address them uh, as much as possible. Uh, we've got a question on, uh, I assume that the question referred to depolymerized PS, so-called uh, mm -hmm. DPS. Will DPS be guaranteed without any filler or additive residues like a virgin? Yes. Virgin. So, so um, we we need to uh, make sure that the waste is cleaned and sorted before we run the depolymerization. So, so it will be the end high quality PS or high high content PS, and then it will be running through a chemical plant, will be heated up, and uh, it will be also distilled at the end. So, after distillation, you have pure styrene monomer, and this pure styrene monomer is just of same quality as virgin styrene monomer, and all. The products produced out of this are of same quality, and thus you also can achieve, for example, medical or food contact performance. But there's a question, I think you mentioned it, on the difference between PC uh, post consumer recycled and mm -hmm. post industrial recycle. Can you elaborate? Yeah, so post consumer recycled is a uh, waste that has been used by consumers. For example, take a yogurt cup take a car that has been used, take your computer that you had for some years and then you've thrown away, uh, take your washing machine. So all of those are um, products of ABS plastic where, where, or PS where it is used in, in, the, in the real world yeah, uh, by consumers and then thrown away. And, and in this throwing away in this waste, there's always the risk that it's, it's lost to environment. So by recycling those kind of waste streams, we secure those uh, streams and we prevent littering. Post-industrial is uh, like um, like waste that that is happening in the production process. Take for example the washing machine. If you if you have the front of a washing machine and you produce it in a mold, injection molding plant, you always have some um, some scrap or some some uh, residuals that 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 not, don't go in the final product that can be reprocessed in the plant or that can be reprocessed somewhere else. But this is so-called post-industrial waste uh, that is usually under good control. Uh, so it's not, not about wasting waste or littering in the environment. Right. Um, 
got a question also on greenhouse gas emission uh, in EOS and on some ambitious target uh, mm -hmm. uh, of reducing uh, net zero by 2050. Uh, um, what are you doing to get to this objective? Yeah. So, so um, if you talk about net emissions, it's always the question about scope. So, uh, um, Clearly, we as a neo star evolution, we produce emissions by our activities, by our plants. We uh, produce monomers like styrene monomer uh, in, 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 for example, in Antwerp. And, and actually, producing monomers is very energy intensive. Uh, um, so, so if we can produce this styrene monomer with less uh, fossil energy, for example, with green electricity, uh, that will be would reduce our emissions quite significantly. We are we are into this, so we we are going to implement green electricity in all our European plants. Uh, I speak about Europe at the moment, uh, and um, um, also we are going to uh, to look at uh, at our feedstock, and this is a different topic. So it's not only the emissions that we uh, produce in our plants that we address. Um, with net emission, what you call by NEOS. By the way, another option to reduce such emissions, emissions uh, is an activity by NEOS called green hydrogen. You, you know this. So, so, so really going away from fossil based energy sources uh, towards uh, green energy sources in our productions. And the other scope is the products we produce contain um, raw materials that we procure ourselves. So it's not emissions. In that we actually produce in our company, that are already these emissions are already in this product. If you buy them and if we process these raw materials, they will also end up at our customers. So we also strive for reducing these emissions, and this is really addressed by the by the things we have talked today. So so we really talk about our emissions reducing this by green energy, and also our product emissions reducing this by alternative raw materials. In the meantime, I received many other questions here. Yeah. Um, uh, what are the typical PCR feedstock for the mechanical recycling products? I think you said it, but. Yes, we, we waste. So, electronic. W E E E, so basically yeah. electronic uh, uh, equipment. And the industry should really, and, and, and all, our, all our customers should strive for setting up new streams. So, uh, there are good examples of waste streams. Take, for example, PET bottles or the we waste, but I'm sure there will be more in the future. Yeah, I think we're working also on project with automotive to yeah. uh, identify source in the automotive industry for Starinix. Um, another question, any information on volume availability year one, year two, year three for mechanical recycled Novodur? Can you commit on volumes, Christian? I will not commit here. Uh, so, so yeah, we are working on this and, and then I think we should discuss this uh, with you then. Yeah, it depends on the the application yeah. and the, the type of product, obviously. But we are on the ramp up phase, clearly. Uh, is the recycled grade price higher than the virgin grades? That's a, a bold question. Yeah, usually I would ask back, uh -huh. what do you think? <laughs> what do you want? But can I do this right now? Um, yeah, there's a value in there. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we don't do this for cost saving. And uh, so first of all, we expect our customers to be able to transfer this value. Let's say you, you have an eco application um, um, that is much more interesting also to end consumers. And, and by this, you can actually, as, 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 as producer of, of, for example, consumer goods, uh, get more value out of, of an application. And I think this value is clearly there. Uh, and also the costs uh, of all the systems are not lower. So, so uh, bioattribution, uh, chemical recycling, and also mechanical recycling is all quite complex, with the waste handling and so on. So I can tell you, it's not; it doesn't produce less costs. Okay. So um, another question on the emissions. I think the question is about um, the the emission in automotive interior. Any comment on the emission for mechanical recycling of your I heat for automotive interior mm -hmm. applications? Yeah, good question. So not the greenhouse gas emission, I guess. It's I know. About I got, the, got this. The yeah. OC, yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is thing we. This is something we can manage. So so with mechanical recycling, we have emissions well out under control. Uh, so so for automotive, we can really um, have the quality expected. 
Um, there is some restriction, as I said, for food contact and medical, but for automotive, I don't, I don't see a problem here. We have this well under control. So uh, an anonymous, uh, anonymous uh, is asking whether he can get a sample of depolymerizing polystyrene for testing. So obviously this is something needs to be uh, treated separately um, before one to two, three years, you said. Yeah. Um, I mean, Pierre, we said, uh, so there will be more questions that we can answer, so so we, we can follow up later also. But do you have more questions right now? Or Yes, uh, I've got more questions here. Hmm? Um, we have three minutes to go. Uh, okay. Which cost impact between virgin polystyrene and virgin polystyrene mass balance? Just a ratio versus virgin polystyrene. So basically, again, uh, I think the uh, direction in what kind of price premium. Uh, here the question is on, on cost, uh, whether yeah, a mass balance polystyrene cost is higher than the virgin polystyrene. Well, Difficult to answer, I suppose, but... Uh, yeah, mass balance is based on different feedstocks, so you replace, for example, the styrene monomer um, by, by a, a bio-styrene monomer or by a recycled attributed styrene monomer. And, and yeah, the costs of those, as I said, is not lower than for the for the fossil uh, because of the quite uh, uh, yeah, elaborated uh, um, way to produce those. Right. I've got a question more also on polystyrene here. How hips, so high uh, impact polystyrene, yogurt cup being recycled? If yes, how and to what, what product? Yeah, so hips can be uh, recycled by either depolymerization, um, um, but I'm not the expert here, but I think it might be possible, but it's part of our uh, pilot phase to, to test all this uh, next year. But it can also be clearly used for for a chemical recycling, but it might be also used for mechanical recycling. Yeah, super clean technology, and this is down being reused. What product was a question? Well, I guess back to polystyrene. Yeah. If you do mechanical recycling of hips, you will go back to hips. Yeah, and for the chemical recycling, you can be a feedstock for all the different styrenics that we. Are. Yeah, you can go back to you can go to ABS for example. Do you expect the supply of recycled plastic fulfill the demand in EU in the next five to ten years? That's a very strategic question uh, addressed to the EU Commission, I suppose. Uh, but it's 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 um, touching one important point. So what we talk here is all sources ex Europe. So we don't plan to import any uh, waste from other regions. I think that's also not a very sustainable solution. And also we are active in all regions. So we are going to use these waste streams in the regions. Yeah. So, but then we are a bit limited to the European sources, and yeah, we are working on this, and and we see the clear, clear, clear ramp up. We have plans how to start this up, and uh, but it will be always a discussion about availability. Yeah, and I think we can say uh, that it's going to be quite short to access this feedstock yeah. and to feed we, our. We need uh, we need to establish new new recycling streams. For example, we need to establish good recycling streams for automotive. So uh, uh, maybe last questions, um, yeah. looking at the time. Uh, how do you check that no flame retardant from electronic waste get into your material? Do you have a special quality gate? Yeah, so uh, uh, in all this process I showed for um, cleaning up and sorting PCR, ABS, uh, there's also a measurement about promine content. So it will prevent this. Also make to prevent the tool, yeah. So, um, I think we're reaching maybe, the end of our yeah, uh, yeah, maybe, more maybe. questions coming, but yeah, yeah, let's finish. Right, so there will be more questions. Um, because they are anonymous now, uh, we cannot answer them to you because we don't know who asked this question. So here we could only ask, only ask to answer the questions that we raised now. So if you had a question that was not answered, sorry for that, uh, it was not possible in this time frame. Uh, you can ask your key account manager if you are already in contact with uh, Star Revolution. If not, you can use this uh, email address. And you, you have this email address already. It was sent to you an invitation. Uh, so please, please contact us and, and state your question again. Sorry for, for not answering it. Or if you have further questions, you are also very, very happy to, to ask them via this uh, different options. Right. By this, I, yeah, thank you very much for all of you. Uh, I hope uh, I, I've seen a lot of registrations, so, so very. I think it's an interesting topic, um, and I, I hope we could tell you uh, something new today that was clear and something interesting. 
and yeah and and would be happy to to get in contact to you about projects so so i think this this is a very interesting path forward we have here Thank, Thank you for my side as well to everyone and for the great questions. And uh, again, you can look at this uh, webinar in the video uh, that will be posted on our website uh, very soon, I guess, next week. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Driving success together.